What's up, y'all? And welcome back to another episode of that Dynamite Review Show on the Trinology News Talk. As always, I'm your host with the most, Mr. Trinology himself. And with me, as always, it's my co-host with the most, Mr. Leland Bedford. What's up, brother? What is up, everybody? Sorry for the delay in the episode as my wife and I, we traveled from Atlanta to Georgia, Detroit, Michigan um, on Thursday. So couldn't do the review. But live from Detroit, we are back at it. Time to do this AEW review. But this ain't no ordinary Dynamite review. This is a Grand Slam Dynamite review. As uh, on this Wednesday, this is kind of a, a this past Wednesday is a championship edition of Dynamite Grand Slam, which are uh, the the uh on Rampage, it's mostly mostly gonna be focused on grudge matches, first time ever's, and uh also there's some championship matches in there, but like I said before, it's mostly focused on grudge matches and, and rivalry matches and also a first timer for on Rampage. But um but um but but Dynamite, it was all about the championships. Yes, it was. We had some debuts. We had some championship uh, changeovers, um, some shocking ones and some predictable ones. Um, but yeah, big show. Arthur Ashe is a great arena. They went out and did exactly what AEW does best and put on really good, really great professional wrestling matches. Yeah. And uh, like, and like we said before in the past episode, uh, the night um, after, Arthur, uh, after All Out was a reset, this also was a reset too. Like uh, ever since uh, after All Out, the reviews are going up. Everybody's starting to uh, like it more. AEW now, and um, you really don't need CM Punk. You don't really need the Elite to be all uh, uppy at it. So this was a ba- was a banger show. I'm hoping Rampage does the same too because um, this uh, this uh, portion of Rampage is going to be two hours for, for for this week as part of the Grand Slam week. So let's see if Rampage can, can live up to the um to the height that uh, that uh, that Dynamite did. So um uh first up, we got a um a first championship match with the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship with uh Claudio Casanova defending against uh Chris Jericho. This is going to be Jericho's first time going after the Ring of Honor World Title that which he has never held. He mostly held all major world titles in um in separate uh, separate companies, except for um, Impact Wrestling and uh, and New Japan, if I'm uh, if I'm correct. And um, so, uh, the the start of the match, they were supposed to do the uh, Court of Honor, which Jericho did, but uh, it didn't go that well. And uh, as Claudia would expect, it it was just a slap in the face. I mean, what can you expect? It's Jericho. He's a heel, and you gotta you gotta sell it, and you gotta sell it. Right. I, obviously, yeah. Claudio was the baby face of this match for sure. Jericho got to go in and create that heat, get the crowd behind Claudio, um, which was a great opener match, man. This match was a banger. Absolutely. And especially with Claudio, Jericho being his, I think in his 50s well, right now, if I'm believing. Man, Jericho, he doesn't look it, man. He really, like, when he says he pumped the part with the view, he definitely did, man. He does not look it at all. Yeah, especially when um when Claudio uh, well, won the title back at um at Death Before Dishonor, he be uh, putting on great matches uh during his reign, and he put off another one, uh, uh, well with uh with Jericho here, a lot of um uh, back and forth and, and near falls and everything, so uh, it was crazy. So in the final moments of the match, Claudio got nearly twenty revolutions uh twenty uh uh revolution of the dry of the giant swing. With a huge lariat, but Jericho getting kicked out. Jericho scored to get the get the Floyd the bat, but Claudio blocked the swing. Jericho bat shot Claudio near into to the referee Aubrey Evers, who was uh, getting rid of the bat. And as Jericho caught uh, and did a low blow kick to, to Claudio and hit the, the Judas effect to win the title and became the archo in this excellent uh, opening uh, of the match. And then afterwards, the Jericho appreciated the side came out to celebrate, but uh, Daniel Garcia was not really uh, uh, impressed because, um, as you know, Jer- uh, uh, there's been back and forth between Jericho and Garcia, and uh, uh, Garcia say, "Oh, 
you will you be able to win your matches, eh, but you've been cheating and, and uh, not living up to your word like um right. like Daniel Garcia did. So um here here's two scenarios here that uh, uh, what, what what happened here. Now, if they ever do a rematch between Jericho and Claudio, you know Claudio can't get, can get get it back anytime. But uh the main story here is between Jericho and Daniel Garcia. Now, um, Eric pitched a, um, a scenario to me, like, what if Daniel Garcia does the same thing like Brian Danielson did back then when he was in ROH, hold the Pure Championship and the World Championship for Ring of Honor? What if... My bad, I was muted. Yeah, that'll be great. You know what I really think what they're doing? I think they're trying to establish with this new audience. Of course, a lot of these guys are Ring of Honor fans, but there's a lot of people who maybe not be too familiar with Ring of Honor. They're really trying to establish that Ring of Honor is a promotion that's based about the honor of the man, the, the, the you know, the honor of that character. That's what the Ring of Honor brand is for, you know. These wrestlers agree to a code of honor and that they're going to wrestle a pure wrestling match. And it really highlights the heels when they break the rules and they're a champion without honor. So I think they're trying to really establish that um, in a way with Jericho as a heel champion. Um, to, and he can go off and say, I have all the honor. You know, I, I'm the most honorable man in the world. Call me Judge Jericho. You know, um, you know, he can go off with that. It is going to establish and uh, put that foundation in Ring of Honor of this code of honor system. And having that uh, beef with Garcia, who's not the pure champion, will the championship make him be more pure um, and change the man, you know, so to speak, where he goes against Jericho. So good idea to put the bet on Jericho. I mean, why not? Ring of Honor needs a, a face. Not saying Claudio isn't a good face, but that this was his first time you know, at bat. This is his first time with that belt, you know? And I think it just gets the revving, the, gets the engine going for Ring of Honor because now I want to see if Claudio gets a rematch. Now I want to see if Claudio goes back for it. You know, that was his first championship, uh, World Heavyweight Championship. I'm pretty sure they made good money off the shirts. And it's going to pe get people to want to see Claudio get it back because he deserves it. You know, I think people would have been just fine with Claudio having that belt for another six, seven months. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool that he has it. But putting Jericho in it, now we get people talking about it. Now, here's another question. Does this help uh, wait, wait, with Jericho winning the world title? Does this help uh, Ring of Honor help get a TV deal? Maybe so, because uh, like we said before, Jericho is kind of like the the Michael Jordan of AEW, along with uh, John Marcy, Brian Danielson, and all the veterans in uh, AEW. So um, this could help... Um, uh, Ring, Ring of Honor to get a TV deal, but um, but the main focus here, like I mentioned before, is between Jericho and Garcia. So we we'll just had to wait and see where the where did it, uh -oh. where did this goes. Trico still there? Yeah, I think we lost Trico, so I'm gonna talk until he pops back in. But yeah, I think the the main focus is Jericho uh, and Garcia, kind of that story that's going to be blooming between those two how will they you know go out and you know how will garcia start to become this pure champion start to adhere to the code the, uh, the, the the honor code the code of honor that ring of honor has and how jericho will laugh or spit in that you know so i think it's going to be a great kind of battle between the two between mentor and student um and about what's right and what's wrong was you know how you can still win and be vicious without having to cheat and it seems like garcia is having a big issue with cheating and doing what you have to do to win and he, i think he wants to show that he can just be a good wrestler and win trico you back yeah i'm back there we go yeah and then uh, actually so um yeah so after that we got a uh fantastic video happy out what was the main event for the to, to crown a new AEW world champion between Brian Danielson and John Motsi. So this is only the second time that they're meeting. The, the last time they first met was back at Revolution in February. In February. Yeah. Yeah. This was, uh, I was definitely anticipating this match all night. 
and Good video then, uh, package too. Yeah. And then um we go into the World Tag Team uh, Championship match. Now, the champions was uh, accompanied by the the rapper uh, Fabulous, while the acclaim was accompanied by DJ Who Kid. Now, if you don't if you don't know who DJ Who Kid is, he was from the uh the the former you know with uh 50 Cent's former group the G Unit with uh, Lloyd Banks, Young Bucks, and uh and Tony Yayo. And you guys uh, don't know what Fabulous is, man, y'all probably just too young. You probably just too young. <laughs> facts, facts. So um, let me just say this: Was this match better that they had it all out? No, absolutely not. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you why. The the uh, the match that they had it all out, and with that Chicago crowd, man, you cannot get any better than this. Now, did they mess up with not pulling the trigger of having a claim winning the title at all out? Yes, no. they did. Yes, they no. did. No, they did not. But wait, no. hold on, hold on. Wait, let it hold on. Let me go with it. <laughs> but now, hold on. Let me let me go with it. Now, they they could have, they could have, they could put it off at, at Chicago, but they wanted um uh, Keith Lee and uh, Swerve the 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 hold on to the titles. I can understand that. But now, they feel like oh Arthur Ashe is now the time for them to uh to pull the trigger and um uh, and fix the mistake that they did in Chicago in, in New York. I think it was never a mistake. Did it draw more money? Did it draw more interest? Yes. How was that a mistake, bro? Like, if it drew more money, drew more interest, and people were excited to see it, how did it make a mistake? Now, what I do think is a mistake, I don't think he should have dropped the belt to the claim on this. I think he, it shows that he just listens to the crowd. Um, I think he should have made the crowd mad one more time and then came back for part three, and then gave them the belts. That's just my opinion. I wasn't ready for Swerving Our Glory to lose the belts. Um, I like how they're protecting Keith Lee as a baby face, with Swerve being more of the heel. Um, but I would like to see that story more. I would like to see that story break down more. These guys start to really, like, give me one more match between another tag team, and we see their communication break down, and we see their – you know, they're having issues or whatever. Um, so I don't think they should have put the belts on them then. I wanted to see one more. So I don't say it was a mistake in Chicago, but I do say it was a mistake yesterday to put the belts on. Even though the crowd was going crazy and they're like hometown guys and all that stuff. And the funny kind of likes to put the hometown guys over in the hometown. But I don't want to show, I don't want Tony Khan to show that he's just a puppet to the crowd. That depending on what the crowd says and everything, that he just has to buckle and bend. I don't like that. No, Tony, keep us guessing, man. Keep us, keep us wanting more. Keep us wanting to see these guys want more. Because when it finally happens, it's gonna be like, yeah, finally did it. But I feel like he busted his load too quick last night. I think he could have really pushed this over one more time. Yeah, we yeah. all would have been excited for a swerving our glory and the claim three. You know, we all would have been just as excited. So, I don't know. But I'm happy for the claim. The claim, listen, I, I wasn't going to be happy either way. You know what I'm saying? I, I still would have said, like, oh, man, I wish the claim won. But I am a fan. I I do love the claim like everybody else. Um, they are homegrown talent. I've been a fan of these guys since, the you know, they came out. I've been on their side. So, but I don't think it's too early, man. I just think it's a little bit too early. But I'm happy for them, and I'm happy that they got a chance to experience it. But, dude, just give me one more. I mean, you let us wait. Make us mad sometimes. You don't always got to make us happy, Tony. You can make us mad sometimes, you know, and we're still going to watch next week. Hmm. I don't know about a third match, but um, because uh, we got some stories coming out of this uh, this tag team title match that could lead in the future. But um, um, in the final moments of the match, Lee missed the moonsault off the second as Swerve tried to do a cheat shot on Caster with the boom box, but Caster ducked and hit Swerve uh, um, and Keith Lee instead. Bowens tried to hit the spinning net breaker, but as Caster leaped to do his mic drop, his knee gave out for being worked on early in the match, and I was like, uh-oh, I thought this was over. Like, they was not going to win it at first when I saw this happen. But, um... 
Swerve hit a back kick in the corner on Caster and hit a fireman's carry release on Powell almost from Lee. And the assistant power bomb delivered to Caster, who kicked out at two. With the acclaim on the floor, Swerve did a spring 450 onto them and had a face-off with badass Billy Gunn. The referee was turned to Lee as Borens hit a spinning forearm and Gunn hit the famouser back inside. Borens hit a spinning net breaker and Caster nailed the mic drop for the win as the confettis poured down on the, the acclaim and, and Gunn's scissored for the wins. And there you have it. You have new World Tag Team Champions. This was a long time coming. The acclaim was there from day one when AEW started. So um, it is great to, uh, to see it. But um, do we, will, will um, match number three happen? I don't think so because I think they try to move on with uh, not that say Keith Lee and Swerve and Our Glory you know, was a bad team. They held it down. With their title wing for like, but I think it was Lisa for a month, and uh, there was a great tag team. But now I think it's time to focus on with Swerve Strickland, uh, possibly going heel, and then Keith Lee being that um that monstrous baby face that everyone loved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. Like I said, like they they did a good job protecting Keith Lee. They did a good job protecting him. You know, he's still baby face and. Swerve can be that heel, which I like Swerve as a heel, you know. Um, I hope the team don't break up. I think they have – it's just something that works about them, the small man, big man thing, something that just really clicks and works with them. Um, but at the same point in time, they were never a tag team. They're, you know, they're single competitors. So, I mean, it's just natural for them to go back to being single competitors, um, you know. But, yeah, um, congratulations to the acclaim. I do think it was too early. I don't care what the crowd is saying. I'm looking at it from a business point of view on this one. And I'm looking at it from, I mean, I'm pretty sure the sales went up the roof last night for the shirts, but I don't know. I just think it could have been stretched out a little bit, but congratulations to uh, the acclaimed who definitely deserves it. They've been carrying, you know, they're, they've been growing and growing and growing and listening, getting better and better and better. Um, and it all worked out. So. Yeah. New champs. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of tag teams, as before, like we mentioned, uh, we go backstage with Nancy in there interviewing FTR, who gra- congratulated the acclaim for their win. And they said they've been number one ranking since April, and they was about to challenge the champs until the Gun Club, who is with now, the, uh, now known as The Firm, and they call themselves the Young FTR. Now, they say the Gun Club was interested in tag team titles, but we don't know which titles they want to go for. Is it the AEW tag team titles? Is it the AAA titles? The Ring of Honor tag team titles? Or the IWPG tag team titles? We don't know. So that's why you could see a rivalry between the Acclaim, FTR, and the Gun Club. And the Gun Club. Hey, the, the promo last night from the Gun Club was really good. Dalton did a really good job uh, last night. And speaking of the firm, Tony Schiavone interviewed uh, the Black Boot Combat Club's uh, Willie Yuta to give his thoughts on the main event until MJF interrupted with a huge ovation. Now, he is from the uh, uh, New York side even though he's from the Long Island side, but uh, he is a New Yorker. So um, that's why he got that huge uh, uh, ovation. Now, MJF called Shivani a fat old prick and told Yuta he was mine and would never receive a reaction like that in his life. He said the crowd loved him so much, the crowd would, uh, would drink his spit and allow him to sleep with any of their wives. And, and he also said that the devil is back and they are his devil worshippers. I don't know. If that's a great PR move to say, but <laughs> but, but but hey, it's it it's it's held. But, it's um, a gimmick. It's a gimmick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything that uh, MJF can sell, they are good with it. But um, Yuta mentioned MJF's engagement. In case y'all didn't know, uh, MJF got engagement to his um 
uh, his uh, his current girlfriend that he, he um that he's dating right now. So uh, they expect to get married soon. Congratulations to them. And um, he said she'll walk out on his spineless ass just like he walked out on AEW. MJL wishes good luck to the Blackpool Cuckle Old Club, and whoever wins the the the, the world title will lose to him. MJF ran down Danielson and Moxie, but when he got to Regal and re- referenced Peels, Yuta ducked him. MJF got a, a headbutt, shoved Shivani down, as Yuta g- got a double leg. W. Morrissey made a save and attacked Yuta along with MJF, uh, hitting him with a with, with the diamond ring. As security tried to uh, to separate him. Now, from this, Yuta got destroyed. With this whole promo saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, it's tough to put anybody against MJF, but he did hold his own. You know, he win, did he win the promo battle? No. But did he, you know, show some character and show some life and show that he can, you know, be put in that position to um, be in front of a crowd and talking, but it's hard to be in a promo battle with MJF. He's kind of a prodigy at that shit, you know? So um, it would take a veteran to go toe-in-toe with him on the mic um, because he's just that dang good. But Yuta did hold his own. You know, he it wasn't like he buckled. It wasn't like he stuttered. He didn't mess up a line. He held his own, you know, which is good for him. Yeah, but um, as you guys already know, this uh, we're probably going to see a um a faction war between the firm and the Blackpool Combat Club down the road. But we'll see, see like that. that. See like that's coming. Now that um, Yuta has beef with MJF, MJF is going to want the belt from Moxley. Seems like the firm and B B C C C is going to be an issue. Yeah. But um, after that, we got a segment uh, backstage earlier in the day with uh, Damai uh, interrupting Jay Cargill and told her that her backup for the TBS uh, uh, title match at Rampage is Miami rapper uh, Trina. This upset Jay and asked Akira to Hogan knew about this before storming off. Now, listen, listen, Jay, I know you're, you're the baddie and you're the that bitch. But listen, you do not mess with the bad bitch and the bad, and the queen of the 305. Represent. Represent. Well, look, you can tell where Trico from, ladies and gentlemen. You can tell you from Miami. Uh, he's over here defending Trina. Uh, yo, I ain't gonna lie. Last night, this was uh, out of nowhere. I'm like, what? Why is Trina's on AEW after Fabulous and DJ Hookie? This is a star studded event. Stars kind of giving me shades of like pre WrestleMania, like when before WrestleMania was a thing and all these celebrities started to drop by uh, WWF at the time. So it kind of was giving me like, is this like pre-WrestleMania type stuff? I have all these celebrities just drop by. But my homegirl was watching this. Like I told you, I got friends now that come over and watch Dynamite. Um, and they usually don't watch wrestling, but now they're AEW fans. They come over on Wednesdays and we drink a beer and they watch Dynamite. Um, and my homegirl came over and she was like, yo, they got fabulous. DJ Who Kid and Trina in all one episode. I was like, man, they're making this show just for you now. Um, and she was like, she was excited. She was like, I want to see what happens next with Trina. So this is working. You know, having these people attached to it, you never know who's a fan of these people. Um, and then it brings in new crowds. You know what I'm saying? So hey, you know, let's get some, let's get some people talking about it. So Trina's gonna bring in her fan base, and the people might watch it, like, y'all kind of like this. And then go from there. They now they're fans. So everything to bring more eyes onto the company is always a good thing. Also, yeah. Jay, baby, looked good last night. Always, that's my boo. So I had to throw that in there real quick. Yeah, and um, I, some some of you may or some of you may not know. I did meet Tr- uh, Trina when um I was uh, uh on, when I was working on and shooting the um the uh, current season of Love and Hip Hop Miami. I did. Nice, nice. Yeah. What's she like? Oh yeah. Um yeah the they did um 
a, an official holiday called the Trina Day, and they gave her like the the keys of the keys of the Miami. And they gave nice, her- nice. That's cool. But uh, like I said before, Jay, you do not want to match somebody although who's from the islands. In case y'all don't know, Trina has a um a Trinidad background, so y'all should know. Y'all should know. <laughs> Jade ain't afraid. We'll see. But um, uh, going into the next championship match, and it's a rivalry that's been uh, going on for, for years, ever since the start of AEW, um, is Pac versus Orange Cassidy for the uh, AEW All-Atlantic Championship. Now, do I think this could be the match of the night? Maybe so. I mean, uh, th- this show had a lot of um, uh, match of the night potentials, but I think this was the the this probably uh, takes the cake on this one. But um, again, this was all uh, all back and forth. Like that, this match was great, top to bottom. I don't know where the uh, the, the the start from there. I'm just gonna go with the um at the end of the match, Cassidy. Uh, connected with the orange punch, but Pat uh, got the rope break when he was outside. Pat grabbed the ring hammer from the ring bell, shielded himself, and hit Cassidy with the hammer and rode him back in the ring with a tainted victory. Uh, commentary question the way Pat won. Since Pat didn't think Cassidy deserved the title shot that, uh, to begin with, so Pat uh, de- de- defeats Cassidy and retains the all Atlantic championship. Now, does this give Pac a heel turn tonight? I don't think so. Because with it, even if because if he's still with the depth triangle, that he would still consider be considered a a, a, a baby face or with a with a baby face team. Now, I would say Pac is kind of a uh a tweener. Give it a take. Yeah. Like uh, he's a good guy, but but sometimes you got to do healish things. So, so he's kind of like an anti right here. Right. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the – I really wasn't expecting it, though, like to do something so healish. I wasn't really expecting that at all. Um, so very interesting storytelling here, uh, something I didn't see coming. Um, he hasn't done, like, heal tactics or had to be desperate for a win. Like that, maybe it was something just more personal with Orange Cassidy since they have like a bit of a rivalry. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of a shocker to me. But really good match, though. Yeah, but now somewhere down the line, uh, Eat the Page could be watching and we could get uh, Pat versus Eat the Page for the All Atlantic Championship down the road. Somewhere. Which would be a great rivalry. But, like I said, Pac just did some heel stuff. Ethan Page is a very known heel. What's going to happen there? But, um, no, well, we'll see what, what's going to happen there. And um, so, we go into the fatal four-way match for the interim AEW Women's World Championship. Tony Storm, Dr. Britt Breaker, Serena D, and Athena. This was, this was a kind of um, a duplicate from what happened at All Out with the, the Fatal 4-Way, but just what um, two different uh, competitors um, in this match. So um, in the final moments of the match, um, D cut off Baker into the ropes with a net breaker. Dragon screwed Athena's leg onto the ropes and hit a snap net breaker on Storm. Serenia lock was applied until Breaker broke it up Athena had Breaker in a fireman's carry and power up Dean at the same time for a fallaway slam and a Samoan drop, which had broken on the Baker's nose. Somehow she becoming the female version of John Moxley, always bleeding out of nowhere. And um, Athena hit a Gretchen spine buster face buster on Storm, but D broke the count. Athena sent D outside, but she ran into a Storm Tornado DDT. Baker nearly got a curb stomp, but Storm countering with a roll up for the victory. Post match, uh, Baker attacked Storm as Jamie Hader show up just like last week, teasing that she was going to go for Baker, but joined Storm 
uh, but but join in on the storm beatdown with uh, with Baker and uh, um and Serena D. So as Athena and Storm were getting beat up by Baker, Hater, and D, uh, the new music hick, and you are you uh, some of y'all probably already know who it was, and some of y'all didn't. But um, surprise, she's back, and walked in was the uh Soraya Soraya Knight, formerly known as Paige in WWE, for a very who was unaware. To a, a, a came out with a massive ovation. She stared yeah. down Baker and company as she yells that this is her house and did the signature with the ropes. Are like, come on in, come on in. That they all was uh, Hager to, uh, to try to get in the ring, but um, they did not. So um, listen, I have my uh thoughts and opinions with uh with now Soraya not being in AEW. Now this better. Um, give the women's the uh give the women's division more attention. Now you got Soraya Knight uh, uh, on your roster. Now, yeah, I don't know. She hasn't been clear yet to to, to wrestle yet, but uh, we'll find out soon. Uh, in a couple of weeks. Now, this better hype up the uh, uh, give the women's more um how I say more acknowledgement uh, into the uh into the women's division and the women's locker room. We don't need this to be a, a Dr. Britt Breaker one one hit show because we already know she's becoming the uh the shard flair of AEW. We don't need that. Okay. We don't need Tony Storm to be um uh, having to uh lose a matchup with nothing important is uh, going into it. We don't need that. We don't need to have some sort of hate uh, between the, the women's division. We don't need that. We need uh just to be to be equal like the men's division. Don't have the women come on on a certain time and all that other stuff. We need great matches, just like uh, I'll give you an example. Just like um, Thunder Rosa and Serena D. We need that. We need more perseverance. But now with Soraya Knight in your um in your division, you better treat her well because WWE did not do that uh, while Vince McMahon was in charge because uh, she was like the anti diva. And then, like, mm-hmm. you had, and you had Vincent Bruce didn't uh, didn't like the um the anti diva thing. They want to go back to the divas era, and that's what not uh, what uh, Soraya Knight wanted. This is what not Sasha Bates wanted. So, AW, this is your chance to give a better division because if you don't, that's all I got to say. Well, I mean. Let's back it up a little bit. First off, I'm super excited that she's in AEW. She looked it great. Her music sound great. She just brings such a presence um, anywhere she goes. Um, and I don't know if she's clear yet. I hope she's she is cleared. I would love to see her wrestle again, what she, she does best. But even if she's just in a managerial position, you can't put too much on somebody's shoulders if they're just a manager. Um, you know, so the thing is, Dynamite is a two-hour show. Raw is three hours. You have way more room in there to have more women matches and women be more part of the show and women can have their own segments and more things. When it's a um, when it's a two-hour show, um, it's definitely going to be a little bit different. you know. So women do get their kind of one match on Dynamite. I would like to see that get bumped up to two. To give them that note of you know that notoriety, but like I said, two hour shows, a lot of stuff that can change. Now, um, I, I'm super excited that she's here. I'm super excited to see what she's going to do. I was a big fan of Paige. I'm a big fan of, of her. Her real name is Riot, so I can't wait to see what she does in AEW. How this will change the women's division. How this will bring notoriety to the women's division, and just having her on the show, man, she is just. Ah, girl is gorgeous. So she looks great. She sounds great. Just from hearing her say, this is my house again, was nice. Uh, It brings back those NXT black and gold memories of her when she was killing it there and then went up to the roster. She is such a force to be reckoned with. And I hope her injury uh, will not, that injury will not prevent her from doing what she loved. And that's professional wrestling. So we will see. They got her on the AEW roster screen already with a record zero 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 so we'll see what's going to happen next i hope she can fight i hope she can wrestle 
I really do, because that's what she does best. Um, so let's let's see where it goes from there. Yeah, and I hope uh so Soraya, if she's cleared to one day hold the uh the AEW's women's world title, but that's in the future of uh, uh let's see what happens. Um Darby Allen was it um was in a video package said tonight. They was hyping up the no DQ match between uh Darby and Sting against the uh House of Black, which is um Brody King and um <clears throat> and Buddy Matthews. Darby Allen was carrying a body bag onto to the streets and then the subway and then in a taxi and told the driver to take him to Arthur Ashe. I'm here for a funeral. Yeah, I, I actually missed the whole Darby Allen like short films and you know the little vignettes he does because he you know he's a he's a film guy. Um, so I love I really missed this. And this was a really cool, cool one, man. I think it was just a cool short film with this guy carrying his body, you know, through New York City. You know, <laughs> that was pretty cool. So happy to see his short films pop up. Excited to see the match. Yeah. And then um going through the going through the list of matches that's happening on Rampage uh tonight. Like I said before, this is gonna be two hours. Okay, so we have Steaming Darby Allen versus the House of Black, which is Brody King and Buddy Matthews in a no DQ match. We have the Golden Ticket Battle Royal for a future AEW World uh, Championship match. Jay Cargill defends the TBS Championship against Diamond, Atchin Bronson and Hook versus Matt Menard um, uh, and Angelo Parker. Ray Phoenix versus Jungle Boy for the first time. Eddie Kingston versus Sammy Guevara. The TNT Champion Warlow. And the RH uh, television champion says Samoa Joe versus Tony Nese and Josh Woods. And then Powers Hot Hobbs versus Ricky Starts in a lights out match. Nice. I wish they would have did some kind of push for that match um, during the show. I don't remember seeing too much about it. Um, but I wish they would have did some kind of, you know, video or something. Yeah. And then um, before the main event started, uh, Lord William Regal came out on commentary, said this is all business tonight. And then um, yeah, well, there you have it. You see John Moxley versus Brian Danielson in the finals of the AEW Tournament of Champions to determine the new AEW World Champion. Now, before the match started, MJF was shown in uh, in a balcony, like kind of like a uh, like a big skybox with the uh with the chip uh, that grants him a future uh, uh, AEW championship match. So they're treating the um the poker chip that he won at uh, at all out like it was uh like a like a like a money in the bank briefcase contract. Like it was a money in the bank. Yeah they had MJ up up in the up in the balcony, up in the scaffolds and the sweet boxes, just watching over these two guys beat the crap out of each other. And beat the crap out of each other, they did. They was uh, pulling no no strings and no 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 pun. Like uh this was absolutely brutal as you were, as expected. Kind of like the the one they did, like I mentioned at, uh, at Revolution. They was not holding none of it back. So um in uh in the final uh in the final moments uh, uh of the match, uh, Moxley rolled to the stage. In case y'all didn't know, with uh the rampage uh uh the uh the ramp of the stage, they change it up so that like you can see like like cars uh driving down the road. You know, so I like how they did the um the LED uh ramp that that, that was pretty good. So um so Moxley rolled down to the stage and avoiding a a diving a Danielson. To hit the Death Rider out on the stage, which was crazy. So uh, back inside, Mossy quit went for the cover and, and then went for a two, got a two. Mossy slapped, slapped a rear naked choke. Danielson nearly kicked free, but automatically fade and as Mar Moxley win the title in a classic main event. Uh Real Regal joined both of them in the ring as Mossley had the title, and Danielson went as a Regal at the as if he passed out uh, to end the show. Now, a lot of people saying that, oh, uh, Brian Daniels should win the title. So, and like, I wouldn't mind it. But 
I feel like uh, giving the uh, the top the giving the title to Moxley was a better choice for a couple That's reasons. Sure. Uh, number one, he held it down for the summer, which was supposed to was a, was a, supposed to be the uh, the summer of Punk, but now it was the uh, the summer of Mox. So I think this this was the right decision uh, to give it a Mox for everything that he has done, not only just for the summer for every done everything he's done in the company. But now he is now the first ever three-time AEW uh, world champion. Now, uh, and second reason, because they have to sell the uh, MGF and Moxley uh, rivalry going on right now. So, um, and we all know down when it comes to it down the line, and I think this match is going to happen at full gear, and then that's when you'll see MJF beat Moxley for the title. And now, then you're going to ask, who should be the one to take the title for MJF? One person, Brian Danielson, because if Brian Danielson would have would have beat Moxley tonight, the uh, his title win would not would, would would not would not make sense because when uh Brian Danielson will well, down the road when he wins the title, he should have a long reign, and then like uh, once he have his long reign, I think that's when Brian Danielson might retire from wrestling. So I think it's a uh. A good decision for Moxley to win the title here, then lose to the MJF, and then down the road, Brian Danielson can win the title because I don't know. Um MJF might might have a um a long run, but um will it be uh pull off a, a Ric Flair style uh title and have different title ways like he can lose it uh title there and then he can gain it back. So um that uh, anything can happen so the down the road. We don't know. But right now, Moxley's the champ, three-time champion, and then MJF just waiting down the line to uh to cash in his chip for a title match. Yeah, I've been seeing people say, oh, it should have been Danielson. Okay, let me just say this right now. Danielson is great. He doesn't have the connection with the AEW crowd and the fan base like John Moxley has. John Moxley has been here since the start of this company. He is the heart and soul, the workhorse, the guy who carries this company on his back. He shouldn't have lost the title. Now that we know what we know, if Tony knew that Punk was going to go act the butt at that media scrum, he would have kept the title on Moxley. So John shouldn't lose out on the extra money that comes with being a champ because of CM Punk and what he did. So if Moxley was a champ before that, he should be the champ after that. Here's another reason. A lot of people watch this show. They don't think about the business and the money that goes along with this stuff. Danielson doesn't really have merch. Moxley does. That's another big reason why you want your champ to have a, you know, be, you know, be Mox because he actually can sell merch. He can do, he can make money when the show is not running. Danielson has shirts on there, but it's nothing he's promoting. There's nothing he's actually putting out there. Moxley does. So yeah, you want your champ to have that belt so people can go buy that shirt and they can make more money because at the end of the day, it's a business. It's called show business, you know? And that's why Mox is the perfect champ because he is going to promote, he's going to push, he's going to advertise, and he's going to carry the AEW brand uh, like he has with grace. And he's going to do it well until the next person come and takes that, uh, takes that opportunity to be that next guy in line. But that's why you want a guy like Mox to be the champ because he knows what it means to be a champ. I'm not saying Danielson doesn't, but Danielson, since he came to AEW, they give me a, I give, tell me what the Danielson shirt is. It's just a white t shirt. You know, Danielson is not going to be selling merch like that. I don't think Danielson really wanted to be champ right now. He just wants to wrestle. That's what his main focus is right now, is just to put on good matches. Moxley wants to carry this company. You know, Moxley convinced Danielson to come to AEW. So it was up to Moxley to make sure this company is still successful and still running. And I think Jericho feels the same way. He wants this company to be successful and still run. You know, they don't want it to go down, you know. 
And Punk, you know, showed them how close they were to losing deals with all this mess that's been going on. So because of what happened, it's definitely just fair to Mox to put that money back in his pocket since he decided he was okay with dropping the belt to Punk and Punk went to go act the butt and messed everything up. So why shouldn't Mox get the belt back? Danielson to have his time, but Danielson is only there because of Mox. So no, wasn't Di- wasn't Danielson's time? His time will come, but right now this company needs a champion like John Moxley. What a hell of a match between these guys! Absolutely, absolutely. Like this was a phenomenal episode of Dynamite. Arguably, probably the the best show of the year. Um, <clears throat> The crowd was hot for the whole show, especially yep. for the for the for the title changes, the uh, MJF segment, the debut of Soraya Knight, and uh, uh, an amazing uh, main event as well. Job well done to avoid uh, everything that's happened for the past a um, uh, few months. But um, like I said before, um, this is a, a a reset, and we're going back to the to the drawing board and going back to um. Was back to the old days of what we had. So um, this was an excellent two-hour wrestling. So um, let's hope that Rampage can do the same for tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm gonna be watching Rampage tonight. I want to see that action Bronson match, uh, the Hobbs and Starks match, the Darby match. It's a couple of matches on I want to see. So another hot night of wrestling coming up. But yeah, this was a great episode. I feel like since everything that happened with Punk. Their direction has been different. Their vibe has been different. They've been more intentional. Seems like things are more serious. Things are changing. So maybe sometimes things happen for a reason. You know, sometimes things happen for a reason to make you better. So let's see how this goes. Um, But right now, I'm loving what they're putting out. The matches feel good. The show feels tight. So keep it up. They hit over a million. They hit over a million again. So it seems like they're, you know, getting a new fan base. Their fan base is growing. Um, which is nice. That's good. People like to hear that. A million people watch my shit every Wednesday. Bet. That's great. You know, that's the advertisers love to hear that. So yeah, keep going, AEW. Keep rocking. Yeah. And um, hopefully we can be back tomorrow to, to do a rampage, but um, well, only time will tell. But uh, we'll 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 see, we'll see what happens um uh, tomorrow uh, tomorrow night. But um, but that's our uh, episode for today. And um Anything else you want to plug about before we wrap up? You know, I got I'm a teaser trailer for Empathy is coming out soon. Uh, if you guys want to see it, go to our Facebook group, uh, Empathy Film, or just type in Empathy. It's the one with 800 members. Uh, if I get to that, well, actually, 870 members. If I can get that group to 1,000, I will drop my teaser trailer early. Uh, but right now, it's going to be coming out like around October 10th. My teaser trailer is going to be dropped on October 10th for Empathy. Yeah, and then once the uh the the trailer drops uh, uh soon, and then we'll post the link and uh in one of our future episodes, so that way you guys can I uh, think can check out the trailer as well. Yeah, but, yeah. but um, uh, other than that, he is Leland and I'm Trico, and we're signing off. Peace.